Right, next up, <coughs> the vaporizer. So, those that don't know the uh, Lister H2R range very well, this is what they call the Style 2 vaporizer. So, it's, it's called the Style 2 because it's the second style. So, the Style 1 was much more elaborate, it had basically pipes coming out from all over, and all this bowl system was hung much lower. And they ditched it because one, it it uh, wasn't very efficient, took a lot of getting warm, and two, the fuel th flow through the vaporizer was quite quite hard work, particularly getting them started because you had to draw the fuel from down here all the way up and in, and then basically only heated across here. Well, the style two draws it from this side, so you've got a petrol and a paraffin side, and it's got a pre-starter tank for petrol. And a paraffin side which is fed off the main tank and it all goes through the main part of the vaporizer now i've done a separate video explaining how the style 2 vaporizer works on my k-type and it's exactly the same on this fuel comes through this three-way well yeah three-way valve petrol or paraffin through through a jet through into a like a rose cone which is like a pre-atomizer jet then it's funneled up into a cone into here. Then there's a tube that runs all the way through. It turns a 19, goes straight into the cylinder. There's an access bung at this end to clear that tube out. Whether I can get that out or not, I don't know. Uh, the last one I did, I couldn't get it out, so it's had to manage. Uh, you can pre-warm them with a blowtorch. Um, and because you've still got to draw the fuel uphill, there's a, a priming cup. Um, so the main thing I'm going to, well, what I am going to do with this is strip it down into, try and get it into as many components as possible. But mainly I'll try and preserve this this fuel tank um, because I haven't got another. I probably won't end up using it. Um, even if I do run the engine on paraffin, probably won't end up using the petrol side. I'll just use the paraffin side and maybe put a little tap in to turn the paraffin off. Um, I don't know yet, but um, yeah, I need to get it uh, freed off. Um, I don't know if I'm going to use heat, if I'm just going to, I'll clean them up anyway, but I don't know if I'm going to use heat or if it'll come undone or, or what really, but first thing is to remove that tank, remove that pipe, and then remove here, this three-way valve, put that nice and safe. Then to remove under here, where the jets are, take that off, then remove that side, then remove the inlet air valve, or one of, uh, and the water injection valve, and that'll be nearly it stripped down into its bare lumps. And then I'll, I've got this bowl to strip because that's, that's obviously seized. That's free as that one. Um, I've got the tap to free off. I've got all the jets to clean out. I've got that passageway through there to clean out. So there's quite a lot of work involved with this, but this is the the next part of what uh, what needs doing so I'll crack on right so this is what I was, wasn't hoping to be like with this so uh, the bit I couldn't see that was tucked under there is completely rotten out and also it's full of um, full of rust. It's also full of straw in there. But uh, well, anything. I'm just glad I've got it. So I can uh, I can try and salvage it. I might try and solder a new bottom in it or get someone to do something with it. But uh, yeah, I'm just uh, I'm glad I've got it and I haven't pulled the bottom out. So carrying the rest of it. Go. 
Ooh. That's not very pretty. What shit in there? It's all complete though. It has been to bits before in the past, which I did expect for 104 year old. Yeah, that should obviously be all completely clear. So, but yeah, that's that's the rose jet through there. There's a main jet in the bottom of here, so you take that bung out, take that off, and you can alter the depth of that main jet in the bottom. Don't know how you set that main jet, but I have had it out and I've put it back how it's come out, so I'll do that with this. And in there, there it is. A lot of shit. Should be. And this one's different. Maybe not. It's slightly different. So, in my P tape. And I have another one of these Belbos. It's cast iron. Is this? And so is the other one. We have a P tape. This is a brass funnel in here. And uh, a mate of mine that borrowed the valve spring off. He's his is missing. This. Um, it's also a brass insert. So don't know why there's two different sorts, but it's interesting. It's exactly the same. Just this funnel to like funnel it through into the tube, which you can see just up there, but uh, yeah, for some reason that one's cast in, cast in, machined in. How bizarre. Right, elbow next. that so that is literally straight 90 and that goes straight into there but it does. I thought it was full of shit but it just narrows up so basically the exhaust gas come around here and warm all this so they flow around this pipe that runs all the way through so that goes straight through up slightly 90 and straight into the inlet fairly basic To try and take that off, but last time I tried to take that off, it's impossible. I might admit defeat before I start. I know in the K one, that's not a full hole, it's like two halves, there's a line bar through the middle. But yeah, that tack goes straight into there, that'll have to come out. Um, Bottom dollar, beggars seized. Always are. Probably that size.
it might just require a bit of warmth, it's tight, really tight. Bruise it up. Right, into this end. So, that big old screw down. There's one missing. It's a bonus. There's one. It's a bit more cleaning than that one. It's actually freeze that. Guarantee you, it could be full of shit in there. They always are. Little tip, they don't come up first time. Keep your screw out just for this job. There we go. There's the inlet valve. So what happens here? Out of this spring, get some bloody cobwebs off. So you wind that up in and out, and it takes the pressure off and off on and off this valve. Should be able to open it. That's yeah, a good job. I took it to bits because it's seized. So, that, that there is a valve held tight by that. When the engine runs and it wants some air, that valve claps, which allows the air in and out. But, uh, Obviously that's seized. There's a nice little wire mesh on there to stop shape flying in, but you can't get the bloody thing off. So cleaning it's hard work and preserving it is also hard work, so um, it is possible. I've done it before. So this is the water injection valve. So what this does. Can't remember how to last one to bits. You got the valve off. Oh, there's water in the cylinder. Pick. Piece of glass, tube, sight glass, always bloody carbon up.
Those bloody things are this big. Right, the parallel surface between them. You just see in there that little dripper. That's all that does. Got an injection valve, but it doesn't inject anything. It just drips water in. Petrol paraffins. And they work really hard. Creek. And the paraffin. Uh, water is meant to lubricate inside the cylinder. Never used it. That's what I'm told anyway that the creek, I've never experienced it. I've never worked one so hard that needs it. Too really loose for a span of fat and tight for your fingers. There's that. Right, I've got me adjustable somewhere. Because there'd be a hell of a lot of shit in here. Bigger adjustable. Jaws long enough on that one. Yep. Oh, it's actually broke like testing. It's gone so tight. I think it's not done that recently, it's done that a long time ago. Luckily, we can do some tricks out on them. Oh, fuck. Yeah, never mind. Stood to replace. So that casting has been brought 95% of the way for a long time. It's just broken that last little bit. Like I say, I think in my uh, little box of tricks that I have tucked away, just in here, look at that new old stock. So I'm not worried. Uh, I'll hang that on. I've also a spare water injection pipe that I'm missing and a bit of valve, so a few little. Uh, Tip bits to get me out of trouble. So I'm not too worried on that. Might as well try and get that stood out. Tackle that, but it'll be a warm job, I know it will. No point even bloody bother. There's my other one. Go ahead. Where the hell's it gone? Mm -hmm. Go 
on some wet. What do you think? Fuck it out. Can't see it fucking. That turn that fucking plate up, right? and that will like, never come off. Might just try and uh, warm that and see if it will come off. I couldn't get it off last time, so yeah, once well, I break the clean out, probably seeing there. Uh, Absolutely. Zoom in a little bit. All the bloody cobwebs in there. Oh, you can't see very well, it's a bit of a dark hole. Full of cobwebs, full of cobwebs. So the bench before it started, it was clean, so it's uh, full of shit and all. So yeah, what a nice thick soft gasket for there. So when I put it on it don't crack. I also want a nice thick soft gasket for here. Um see on the back, it's a Q vaporizer. I think it's the same one on uh peas as well. I'm pretty certain it is because I've I've seen the part number before. Um yeah, it just wants a right good clean out now. It's full of this shit in there and all. Uh, I'll take that off. Give me a chance to clean all the shit out from the inside because as soon as I start, I'll fucking have it blow out otherwise. So I'll get that off. Um, there's not a gasket behind there. <clears throat> so I'm not too worried. And I'll uh, get them studs out. So yeah, that's that. Vaporizer, all but stripped. Right, just get a tap with the ammo. It's literally 20 seconds after the uh, last video, and it's off. So that one actually does have a little gasket in. And that one has got room for one. So that's something new is that. Didn't know there was a little gasket in there. So, anyway. Partly knackered now, so I'm not worry. Yeah, it's just a little like copper, uh, copper o ring. That face is dead flat. What I'll do, I'll clean that up. I'll get some nuts, slot it over, weld it, hammer the shit out around there with a the, uh, with the hammer, um, air hammer. Well, I won't go that bloody crazy, but and that'll just help shock them, and then I'll I'll whip them out. That, <laughs> so I don't know what to do with that end. I might just leave it. See so how it cleans up.
not bigger. Oh, that's good. Very nice view through anyway, which is what I wanted. Just get a right good clean. So it looks like. Frankly. That end piece won't come out because it's all as one here. So that end bit looks like it goes all the way through. I try here. Yeah. So this end end collar on here, I'm guessing I won't be taking it out. It's all part of the. Uh, that face, if it goes right through, which it looks like it does, I ain't gonna disturb it. I'm gonna try one of these and use a stud extract on them. Is fucking knackered. Right, results drilling out since it's gone flush. five like oh, you get six and a half here This looks a little bit tight than six and a half. I'm just going to drop it down a size. This is five and a half. 
Left-handed boots. Do you remember that? Hate these things. Hate them with an absolute passion. Fucking hell. Nope. Just have to run next side, drill it up. quarter remember these are left handed The top hole is going to be big enough. No, I mean. A little adjustable, just for these jobs. Ah, fucking hell, that is tight. Shitting dog, I'm trying to get it out. Tempted to not bother with that and just to run a tap up it, if I'm honest. That looks far, far, far too tight for me. Run a tap up, whatever's left will come out anyway. If taps near enough, right size, so. Yeah, not too worried, it's still tight. So we've got the other one. Okay, I can't just get the bloody thing out. Right, I'll just remove the stud out, the old one. Right, <laughs> managed to get out the uh, stud extractor, but let's drill it out, so I'm not holding my breath for this one. <laughs>
I'm holding my breath this, I'm not shooting off either, but I've got to get a go. Oh. Oh, bloody hell, it's going. Ah, oh, no, it's sheared off further down. <laughs> Bastard. Oh well. Let's come out part of the way. Hopefully, uh, it's tight. Might we drill out with the drill bit. Bit of luck. Do it while it's warm, it might, uh, might come a bit easier. and exercise down first. square but balls to it. Train is easy out. Huh? That's got a bite. Can't be out there with a lean. Fucking hell. Bass is tight. This one's going to be That's it, there's no left to go up. It is a tap job now At least this one will just grab all the summit No, 
I think I'm just gonna <laughs> feel it a bit bigger <laughs> and go for it. That one should be all right. That's just a bloody little bit of thread there in that one. Have a bit of a go with a pick, see what we can do. Right, after shearing both of them off, um, I got them out, drilled them out, uh, and re-tapped them. So, um, da -da -da. that goes like that. So, live for another day. Bit clunky, because uh, that was not absolutely perfectly straight. But there's also a bit of shite on here still. So, but I mean, that hardly, if ever, get opened. I mean, this other one is for a, a blow lamp bracket. I've thought about uh, fabricating one a few times, but never got around to it. I've never found an original one to see what they look like. It's not in the parts manual or anything, so I don't even know what it looks like. But yeah, now that's that felled. It, uh, Reach up and put it on wide so you can see. So I wanted to get in there because you can basically get right through there now to the exhaust. So I can clean in all sides of that. I can clean right through there because that bung's removed. So I can make sure that's nice and clean right through there. Um, I can now see there's more light and clearance in here through into the exhaust part here to get all that shit out there. So it looks about a quarter of an inch thick in bottom of there. Um, I'm getting the inlet, clean all that nicely. So, yeah, it was worth sort of breaking them two to be able to, to get in, um, to be able to clean it a bit easier. So... Now it's a tedious process of cleaning it. The outside's obviously going to stop as it is, but the inside wants to be as spotless as I can get it. So that's enough for today. I'll pack up and tidy up, and I'll uh, have a go at this tomorrow. Right, so here it is. This is a Style 2 vaporizer in just about every part it can be. So, start with the petrol side. Fuel tank to your fuel line to your tap. Fuel bowl with float in the top, but the float in this one is missing. But there would be a needle in there to hold the float to a level goes through there, through the three-way tap. This one's currently seized. Then, from there, it's exactly the same, but paraffin side, see there's a lid, wing nut, that's pumped from the main pump, up into here. So this is your inlet, this one here, this one is your overflow, and that one in the bottom of there is your outlet. How it works is it pumps to a constant level, which is this level here of the overflow. So it's always got a head of fuel. It then comes out of there into your three way tap. The last time this engine was running, it was on the paraffin side, petrol side to the left, and the marks with petrol and paraffin on there. To show this lot together, here is a complete unit. So, but this one is originally off this engine. I know that because I got it with it. What I did know its difference, this fuel bowl on the left hand side um, is different. It's a lot bigger on this, it's the same size, but to keep it the same, I'll probably use the one that's with it because I know that matches the fuel tank. So from there it goes through the three-way tap into here. It goes through here, I've moved the bung out the bottom of here, and in there is this jet, and that's screwed in from the bottom up. So 
that jet is then covered by this brass fitting which goes over like that so the jet is then poking out the bottom and then how that works is then that jet sprays fuel into the bottom of that cup which then comes out through them holes which then comes out through them little grooves in that fitting so that screws in there and then little holes make like a rose jet right around that fitting because that that's cone shaped that cone shaped fit in there and it then sprays that screws in here sprays up through there into the bottom of here into this cone the other way basically which is brought the whole machine nice and smooth in there through there through that 90 then into here and this is a machine tube that runs all the way through the vaporizer and it runs through the middle of there so you can put it in there blow a lamp to warm it up it's the first time I've got this bung out the end of here, which I know now is I can see it's a machine tube. So then that comes through there, up and through into the inlet. Then the air intake valve is here. So in the all the way up position, the spring on the bottom is in the tightest, so it holds it tight. So that's effectively like putting the choke on. When I screw this out, a bit difficult winded. Bear with me. It then, that spring lengthens, as you can see there. And then it takes pressure off that valve. So you can then open it up. So if the engine is wanting more air, then sucks this valve. So you can get it to open. There we go sucks this valve open on its own so it's cone shaped into a cone shaped bit which when it's shut makes an airtight gap so that's in its slackest position you see it falls open on its own weight you would never really run it in that position because there's no drawer of air then it also draws air through here so this is underneath here drawing hot air which then creates the airflow through here to create the suction of fuel through the bottom of the vaporizer. Then the air injection valve, so that's screwed into the top of the vaporizer up here. That's a little glass which is absolutely filthy, goes in there so you see what's going on. And that screws in the top, and then the water fitting comes out of there, goes into the cylinder head, it's out of there, so it draws out the water jacket. A little pipe comes round, across, and into that valve. Into there, basically. And you can undo that and drop water straight in to the inlet. So, it looks massively complicated. And it is quite complicated. But once you get it laid out, it's not actually that bad. So what I've got to do now is clean all this and put it back together. So that's going to be it for this video. So uh, there's a brief explanation of how the Style 2 Vaporizer works. In this video, you've seen me strip it all complete to pieces. And in the next video, it'll be the reassembly. Um, I'll clean it in the start of the next video and then reassemble it. And then I'll put it back onto the engine. Right. We'll see you later. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you very much cheers see you later ciao